<coughs> so in my last class uh, we are discussing about that uh, heaters okay immersion heater and uh, <coughs> immersion heater and uh, geyser okay and their basic operations okay so this we are uh, discussing in our previous classes in my previous class okay so means resistive heating okay it's method of the resistive heating and uh, how it is working okay that we have been discussed now we are going to discuss about arc heating okay and importance of that arc heating okay so what is arc heating so <clears throat> if you recall that previous classes you can uh, understand that uh, you are using there is a direct in and indirect both the methods are available in arc heating so you are using one electrode okay the charge as an electrode another <coughs> electrode is there okay so if you are considering two electrodes are there one of the electrodes and uh, if you are considering out of two electrode one uh, means uh, chargers uh, charge is considered uh, considered like an electrode okay another one is different material of electrode that was related to direct heating and uh, direct arc heating okay for indirect arc heating so charge is not considered any of the electrode okay so that only melting down just presence of that <clears throat> it can be melting down just presence of that arc okay if the arc is there by the presence of arc it will be melting down okay so this kinds of consideration we can uh, we can get from this study okay so what happened in uh, uh, arc uh, arc heating okay so uh, what are the electrodes we are using just like that heating and welding okay both are interrelated okay so we are start we are discussing now heating after that we will discuss about the welding so arc welding also be there okay so heating and welding they are complementary each other I means sometimes means you are using that welding means you are uh, joining two metals or two met non metals okay by the presence of heating okay so there is a chance of heating and due to presence of heat the material will be melting down and they are connected to each other so now we are not considering now we are not discussing about the welding but in the future classes we are discussing about the welding okay so here we are focused on the only heating purpose okay the heating of matter by an electric arc okay so the heating is possibility uh, the, here we are getting the heating by using of electrical arc okay the matter may be solid liquid or gaseous okay when the heating is direct when the heating is direct the material to be heated is one of the electrode so that we are talking about that direct heating method and indirect heating method so direct heating method what we are considering so uh, we are considering like that <coughs> material is heated okay and uh, electrodes uh, and the material means charger uh, is uh, behaves like an electrodes okay for indirect heating the heat is transferred from the arc by convection of the radiations for indirect heating okay so the material is the charge material is not used like an uh, electrode okay so electrode used in the arc furnaces okay so electrode used in the arc furnaces what are the electrode carbon electrodes are there okay carbon electrodes then graphite electrodes and cell breaking electrodes so normally uh, <coughs> three types of electrodes we are using here based on their uh, presence of heating temperature means how much maximum temperature you can go okay based on the temperature you are getting that value okay so what are the temperature so first you can see for that electrode okay so first one is that uh, uh, carbon electrode wire is it using they are made of the <coughs> anthracite coal or the coke okay anthracite coal and coke they have prepared like that manner okay they are in quite cheaper in nature 
uniform heating can be obtained okay uniform heating can be obtained with large area of carbon electrodes okay so large area of carbon electrodes you are using oxidation start about 400 degrees centigrade so at centigrade oxidation started used in small furnaces okay so temperature is 400 degree so that is not so much high okay instead uh, that melting point is uh, 400 degree means not so much high okay for the electrical oven okay more than it may be um, uh, it may be that some hundreds uh, means 1500 okay 3000 so okay in the range is very high okay so where you are using that andesite coal or coal as in carbon electrodes okay then used in manufacturing ferro alloys okay ferro alloys aluminium calcium carbide phosphorus we are using for the heating purpose okay then graphite electrodes also be there okay graphite electrodes first one is the carbon electrodes okay graphite electrodes are obtained by heating carbon electrodes also very high temperature so carbon electrode having 400 degree centigrade now it is in 600 degree centigrade beyond that it will be oxidized so 400 degree above it is there so oxidization you can see in carbon electrodes for graphite more than 600 means it goes to the oxidization okay okay so in lower resistivity of graphite one fourth of the carbon okay graphite is required half in size for the same current resulting is easy replacement okay that's why self breaking electrodes okay what are the self breaking electrodes they are made of the special paste okay so special paste you are preparing okay special paste the compositions of the paste depends upon the type of process for which it is employed okay when the current is passed okay when the current is passed the heat is produced that the breaks the space from the electrode so current is passed may cause for that heat that may break the electrodes okay so that's why for if you go beyond 600 degree centigrade so you have to take this self breaking electrodes okay use production of ferro alloys okay use production of the ferro alloys the electrochemical furnaces electrochemical furnaces and in production of the aluminium by electrolytic process we are using okay so you can understand what are the electrodes for the arc heating so same kind of thing you can also observe okay when you are discussing when uh, you are uh, reading out that arc welding okay there are also different types of electrode we are going to discuss okay that carbon electrodes also be there. okay types of arc heating furnace okay so that as you know direct arc furnaces are okay direct arc furnaces another one is indirect arc furnaces so here you can see the structure of the direct arc furnaces okay so charge is that you can see the charge or material okay that you are using direct that material is using directly so these two are the electrodes so arc is <coughs> now the connection directly connecting with that charge okay that is ac dc power supply you are given and for indirect uh, for indirect arc furnace you can see so directly charge is heated okay that convection so the radiations from the arc okay the arc is not directly related to your charge okay they are externally connected okay so here you can see directly arc is the relation between your uh, electrodes and the charge okay this is your arc and charge okay it's your arc and charge is there heat transfer is there and electrodes are there okay you can see the electrodes direct arc furnaces when the supply is given to the electrodes two arcs are established between electrodes and the charge okay and charge current pass through the charge okay current is passing through the charge so what are the merits okay we have to know about the merits it produces the further products okay so different products you are getting after the uses of that system when compared with the other methods very simple and easy to control simple to use and easy to control 
composition the final product during the refining process. So you can also use it for the refining process. Demerits are there, very costly, definitely. <coughs> Sophisticated devices, so it will be the costly. Electric energy is expensive, even though it is used for both smelting and the refining. Okay, these are the demerits. Applications where we are going to apply it, this type of harness is to produce steel, alloy steel, such as the stainless steel, etc. Used for the manufacture of grey iron casting. So, we are using for manufacturing of the grey iron. <coughs> okay. So, here you can see the diagram of the direct arc furnace and indirect arc furnace. So, I hope you are able to understand. So, bo both the cases you can see some jacket is there. Okay. Insulating jacket. Okay. So, insulating jacket is mandatory for what? Basically, uh, due to the presence of that insulating jacket, what we are doing? Okay. So, no, no exchange of heat. Okay. So, uh, we are providing or uh, is making creations, uh, preventions between the exchange of heat from outer medium to that inner medium. Okay, so that happened here. Okay, so exchange of heat prevention for the exchange of the heat. Okay. Now in so from the diagram you can. Uh, uh, <coughs> Hmm. So, <coughs> indirect arc furnace, okay, what are the important features? Indirect arc furnaces, in indirect arc furnace, the arc strikes, okay, the arc strikes between two electrodes by bringing uh, momentarily in contact and then with the drawing them heat to develop, okay, due to, uh, due to the striking of arc across the air gap is transfer to charge is purely radiations. Okay, so convections, otherwise the radiation. Two options are there. Okay, directly the charge is not involved with the arc. Okay, uh, means they are not using just like an electrode. Okay, so indirectly it will be heated down. Okay, indirectly the charge will be heated. So what are the advantages? Advantages is that lower overall production cost per ton of molten materials so as the directly arc is not related to that charge so uh, directly is not related to the charge so the production so okay the overall production cost per ton may be less okay compared to previous case why it is less so if arc is there directly arc is there okay so the material, okay, the materials also be different type. Okay, so how much temperature is coming from the arc, the melting will be totally depends upon that point. Okay, but in case of indirect case, okay, you can use the multiple arc furnace. Okay, multiple indirect arc, so overall heat can be accumulated. Okay, overall heat can be accumulated from different arcs. Okay, and you can reach up to that mark, that heat. Okay, so <clears throat> sound, okay, sound casting in thin and that uh, intricate design to produce. Okay, metal losses due to oxidations and the volatilizations will be quite low. Flexible in operation. So these all are the advantages. Okay, these all are the advantages. What are the disadvantages? Disadvantages are no inherent steering actions as there is no current flow through the charge. Okay. Continuous rocking, okay, continuous rocking should be done to distributed heat uniformly. Okay. Applications. The main application of this type of furnaces is melting the non-ferrous material. Okay, so non-ferrous material can be uh, you are applied that method for the non-ferrous materials. Okay, for this charges. Now induction heating. Okay, so in previous case you are 
uh, were uh, discussing about what we are discussing about that resistivity and arc arc furnace. Okay, uh, arcing here, arc heating. Okay, both the cases we are using electrodes and charge are indirectly or directly involved in that. That means the charge material should be charge should be material in nature. It's a non-metal. Okay, it's a metal. It's not a non-metal. Means it's all are conducting. <coughs> It's all are most of the cases conducting material. OK, but induction heating also happen for non conducting material means sometimes what happen. OK, so inductions can possible. It's not like that in only non conducting material. So conducting material also happen. OK, so what happened in induction uh, induction uh, heating directly that uh, medium is not involved. OK, direct medium is not involved. OK, suppose you are providing or you are keeping all the charge inside of a bowel. OK, so now it is uh, the bowel uh, that charge. OK, the place charge inside of the bowel can be heated down. It can be heated. OK, inductions if they are so no other medium will be involved. OK, directly it will be melting down. OK, so it's happened in induction heating. OK, what are the features? Induction heating based on the principle of transforms. OK, there is a primary winding through which an AC current is passed. OK, and secondary side is your charge material. OK. The coil is magnetically coupled with the metal to be heated. Which act as secondary. OK, an electric current an electric current is induced in this metal when AC current is passed through the primary coil. Okay, AC current is passed through the primary coil. The following are different types of induction furnaces. Okay. The core type or low frequency induction furnaces are there. Another one is high frequency, so coalless. If there is a high frequency and core is present, so a lot of losses will be there. It is induction furnace. So code type induction furnace, coalless induction furnace. Code type, code type induction furnace is related to low frequency. Code less induction furnace is for the high frequency. Okay. Code type furnaces they operate similar to a two winding transformer. Okay, two winding transformers are there. They are classified into three types. Okay, what are the classifications type? They are D, uh, direct code type and vertical code type, indirect code type. Three types are there. Direct code type, vertical code type and indirect code type furnace. Okay, so here you can see the diagram, diagram of the direct code type furnace. Oh, Second oh, is... Hello? Hello? So here you can see the diagram of the uh, direct code type furnace. The secondary side you can say like that the charge vehicles uh, ha, vessels are there. OK, so that uh, two containers are there where you are placing the charge. OK, cubicles are there. Uh, sorry, <coughs> cubicle uh, cubicles are there for the containing the charge. OK, this is direct code type induction. So and indirect. The vertical code type furnace here you can see the axon weight induction furnace that also known as vertical code type. OK, how it will look like that? So inside of the charge here you can see charge is there vertical. You can see it is placed vertical. OK, outer iron cores. OK, both the cases you can see that outer iron cores and vertically they have placed. OK, these are the charge materials, primary winding, central iron cores and refrigerator limiting. OK, so all are there vertically. OK, and this is called the indirect code type induction. Frame. So three types of. You can observe. OK. And finally, coalless. So coalless induction furnace also be there. OK. So oh, different types of furnaces are there. So one by one we'll, we are going to discuss. OK, so first one, uh, first one is.
So first one is the direct code type induction furnace. Okay, we're discussing it that so direct code type induction thing. This code type furnace is essentially a transformer. Okay, so transformer winding is required, which <coughs> in which the charge to be heated from single turn secondary circuit and magnetically coupled to the primary by an uh, iron core. Okay. The furnace consists of the circular hub or vessel. You can say like the vessel, the charge will be inside of the vessel that is called hub in the form. Okay, which contains the charge to be melted in the form of the annu annu uh, annular rings. Okay, so annular rings are there. This type of furnace has the following characteristics. What are the characteristics? Why it is used in the low frequency? Okay. So <clears throat> the metal ring is quite large in diameter. Okay, large in diameter is magnetically interlinked with the primary winding, which is energized from a C source. Okay. The magnetic coupling between the primary and secondary is very weak. Okay, the magnetic coupling between the primary and secondary is very weak. It's result in high leakage reactances and low power factor. Okay, power factor also low. To overcome the increase in the leakage reactance, the furnace should be operated at low frequency of the <coughs> order of 10 Hz. Okay, so low frequency. That is the basic thing. Condition. So here you can see the AC power supply will be there. The frequency AC power supply. Okay. So conductor is there. Okay. You are giving the supply over there. So magnetically they are coupled. Okay. And as the iron core is there, so magnetically they are coupled. And you can say like that in the secondary side, charged particle means they are almost short circuit. So, so high current will be flow. So I square T means may cause for melting of that charge inside of the hearth okay when there is no molten material in the hearth okay the secondary become open circuit you're getting my point so if the molten if the materials are there they behave like a short circuit if the materials is not there so they behave like the open circuit okay they uh, they are like cutting of secondary current okay. cutting of secondary current hence to start the furnace, the molten metals has to be taken in the heart to keep the secondary as short circuit. Okay, so if the material is there, so it's behaves like a short circuit. Now furnace is operating at normal frequency. Furnace is operating at normal frequency, which cause the turbulence and the severe steering actions in the molten material to avoid the difficult. Okay. This is also necessary to operate the furnace at low frequency. Okay. Then is a obtain low frequency supply, separate the motor generator set or frequency charger to be provided, which involves extra cost. The crucial or the hearth, uh, hearth used for the charge is the odd set to incubate <coughs> inconvenient from the metallurgical viewpoints. Okay, so how much current density is there? If current density is exceeded 500 ampere per centimeter square, it produces the high electromagnetic forces in the molten metal that can adjust the molecular ripples uh, each other at the same directions, and that may cause for melting. Okay, that may cause for melting of the charged materials. Okay, <coughs> that's why the current density and that frequency is very important. The repulsion may cause for the interruptions of secondary circuit, formations of the bubbles and the void. This effect is known as the pinch effect. Okay, that's pinch effect. Another pinch effect is also be there that in your J fed. Okay, fed fed in analog electronics. I think you are I recall that subject pinch effect. Okay, so pinching of the there uh, pinching. <coughs> So where that uh, flow of electrons, okay, that boundary, charge boundary has been uh, considered and uh, uh, that get, okay, based on that get pass, okay, so that uh, mobi mobility of that majority and minority carriers, okay, <coughs> means directly involved, okay. The pinch effect is also depends on the frequency at low frequency, 
this effect is negligible and so it is necessary to operate the furnace at low frequency okay so i hope you are able to get that point okay next one is that vertical type induction furnace okay so vertical type induction furnace that you can see the charge material okay they are placed in vertical nature okay so uh, what is that it is an improvement over the direct coat type furnace to overcome some of the disadvantages maintain direct coat type so some of the disadvantages so type of that furnace consists of vertical core okay you are using vertical core instead of the horizontal core previous case you are using horizontal core now you are using vertical core okay the vertical core avoids the pinch effect the pinch effect is problematic okay here the pinch effect is there in uh, normal okay horizontal core type okay but uh, to remove that pinch effect from the system you are using the vertical core type due to weight of the charge in the main body of that cube okay cubicle the leakage reactance is comparatively low and the power factor is high as the magnetic coupling okay is high compared to the direct core type okay there is a tendency to molten material to accumulate the bottom of bottom that keeps the secondary completed for the vertical core type furnace as it is consists narrow bisect channel so here you can see the narrow visible channel okay so this one narrow visible channel okay <coughs> central iron core is there okay central iron core charge inlets okay now we are giving okay so refractory priming is there okay so here and central iron core is there primary windings these all are the primary winding charge material is here like the secondary winding so now if you give the uh <coughs> power supply with that winding so automatically the charge particles are there they are going to be melting okay outlet for the pouring the melt okay outer iron core okay so this is charge in charge inlet okay this is your charge inlet this vertical type so automatically what happen if it will be melting down its uh, density will be less the climb up then you can <coughs> uh, then you can uh, excess means you can excel the charge from that container okay the inside layer of the furnace is line depends upon the charge type used the clay lining is the use for the yellow brass okay and alloy the magnesia and the aluminum is used for the red brass okay the top of the surface of the furnace is covered with insulating material other heat can be dissipated from the terminals which can be removed for admitting the charge necessary hydraulic arrangement okay necessary hydraulic arrangement are usually made for <coughs> tilting the furnaces to take out the molten material even so having the compared the construction the operating the power factor is in the range of 0.8 to 0.83 okay the furnace is normally used for the melting and refining of the brass okay melting and refining of the brass and non ferrous metals advantages what are the advantages accurate temperature control and reduce the metal losses absence of the cubicles consistent performance and simple to control the operating high power factor and pinch effect can be avoided these are the advantages so next topic is indirect core type induction furnace okay and coldless induction furnace i think these two will start in next class okay so you can better to understand so up to that portions i have covered i am suggesting all of you please prepare your write up okay please compare it to your class note okay so when the from tomorrow i think the classes will be start so i have class on fr uh, friday okay so i will collect your write up okay one by one i will collect your write up so please be up to date okay do not pending your yeah i will collect the write up okay <clears throat> then i will cross check it okay i want to see in the class that you are preparing the write up i'll ask any of you okay randomly in my class how is your progress i want to see the right everything i will ask to my class okay 
So <clears throat> before that, all people, please be ready on it. Okay. So today I have completed. Uh, today I have discussed up to this much. Okay. From next class, it will be offline mode. So we'll discuss the pending portions in my next class. Okay. So next class we'll start from indirect code type harness. Okay. There are few slides in this chapter. After that, we will start a few slides and some numericals are there. Okay, after that, we will discuss about the welding. Okay. <clears throat> okay, any doubts from your end? Is there any doubt from your end? Okay, so I hope no, there is no doubt from your end. Okay, so if you have any confusion, 